what's going on today, Maureen? Well, I'm on the hunt with Marissa. Hello. And we're headed out to Sea Bluff Farm. Last year we went to Sea Bluff Farm and it was a, I don't know, a program. I think it was called Young Agrarians. Young Agrarians, where they're trying to match up uh, people who are wanting to start farms with people who are either wanting to sell their farms or leave their farms. Um, it was all a bit weird and really didn't get any information. But we did get to go and tour Sea Bluff Farm, which is an amazing market farm and it supplies many restaurants and stores here on the island with fresh produce. And as well, they also have their own little stand. And so we're gonna be checking that out. The people who run this farm are absolutely beautiful people. And one of our favorite parts was the end of the event where we all brought food and we had they had these great big long tables and we all just shared a meal. And it was just such a, I don't know, what would you say? an experience because there were farmers that came from other plots and there was also the farm workers that were on site and having conversation. We were able to talk with a couple of other uh, people who were also interested in the program. Although the program didn't fit for us, uh, we're hoping that there were other people that it definitely fit for because there's a lot of farms that when people are retiring or when they are wanting to move, need to go into the hands of other farmers as opposed to be taken over by the cities or by the municipalities because we want to bring food to our own tables but also bring great produce uh, to the public. Yeah so the, the breaking of bread and getting to connect and and ask questions to people who um, you know are have started farms or, or are starting farms it was a, a real fun thing to do but again it's it's always about building that community and you could see many of them they all knew each other and so this opportunity to break bread was uh, an exciting event for them as well. So while we were on the tour, there were strawberries that were just in abundance. And I don't remember the date that, at the time of year, but it was definitely in the summer. These strawberries are absolutely beautiful and, and they were big and they were just like what you see in the grocery store. So I asked Robin what variety these were and she said they were Albion. And uh, so I have been emailing them saying, are you gonna be selling your, your strawberry plants? Which yes, they are. So that's what we are here to pick up. They have a fabulous farm stand here. I see you. I see you. I bought six of the Albion strawberries. I also bought some bok choy and a cilantro just because I would like to get the cilantro up and running. So these all have to go in my strawberry patch. But first of all, I need to pull out all the old strawberries so that these new babies can get in there. No, you can't come out because your guys are eating all my stuff. You have to stay in until just a little bit longer. It's a sad time for all of us. Mm, I feel pretty much as sad as they do because it's like, oh, I like them to come out. But then they go and eat all my little baby plants. So I have to wait for them to get bigger. Mm. I just can't stand it. I'm covering them up. Okay, tell them they can come out, Mrs. Hoiggins. Chickens! 
<laughs> okay. You can come out. But don't eat my stuff. Oh, 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 sorry. Sorry, Gracie. I was covering up the other garden bed and they came and they ate my bok choy. And the strawberries. Apparently, my chickens like strawberries. My own fault for leaving them on the ground for them. It's like, here's the smorgasbord, ladies. Help yourself. So, <laughs> this is my strawberry asparagus patch. But being that it's right at the entrance of the chicken coop, the ladies come down and they pilfer through my strawberry leaves. So, there used to be more, but I have to dig these up before we put the new ones in. And then I have to start teaching my girls not to eat my strawberries. Uh -huh. And then we'll get some of my compost out of here. There's parts that haven't broken down. I just filter it back on through the top. Look at that. Lots of worm life. Apparently these ones are called red wigglers. My chickens don't care for them as much as the earthworms. They'll eat those ones. So, some of the eggshells aren't broken down quite yet. That's nothing, no harm in putting that right into the garden. Now, not all my asparagus are up. Um, and some of them have moved. I think there is one that looks like it's here. I have to kind of plant around them. I do know there's one here because one of the girls has broken it off, but I don't know where his, where he came from, but he, he is about here. I am gonna, you know, kind of, you know, the, the wood is here. And so I'm gonna plant them in just so that the plants have a chance to get nice and big. Let's add in our, our compost. worms yeah you're not coming out you guys are staying there you're eating all my stuff so all these wonderful little red wigglers they'll all get into the soil put something here to remind me that that's what that is well don't go out stay in i will cover you yeah i'm not sure how how this asparagus got there but let's go get our strawberries so i'm supposed to plant them six inches apart so, and I do want them fair in. So about there, about there. And the other side, in between the two So this is what we have so far. And I do have my rain barrel and that, this green hose is the overflow and sometimes what I do is I put the overflow in my poo-poo tea bin there. But for right now, I'm just gonna let the overflow go there. That way it's, you know, kind of watering from this end. You know, my the, the grade of my land does go down on an angle. So, you know, gravity, it'll pull down, but you know, maybe it'll also spread, you know, a little bit more to the other side. But I think that's good. There's me. So with strawberries, you get about a, a three year lifespan of them. You know, these ones will set off suckers and that's kind of why I, I didn't buy too many of them because I'll just start collecting my own suckers from them. Your first year, you know, you get good strawberries. Second year, 
it's less and the third year even less. But if you're wanting to have lots of strawberries through the summer, you wanna pull those suckers off and then maybe towards the fall, start saving some of those suckers so that you can continue your crop life of, uh, of strawberries. The ones I had, uh, I think I just got them from a friend from her garden and I've had them over the years, you know, just kept them going. And they're, they're a great tasty strawberry, but I just found that that these ones were just so much better, better in size and flavor that I just, I wanna have these Albion and start my own little Albion crop. One problem that I have, oh, here's that asparagus, so he's right in between. One problem I do have with this bed is because the chicken coop is is right next door <laughs> i was um i was just doing my poop scooping and i was just throwing the poop in here and i think it made it a quite a bit too acidic in here so it wasn't like it was getting to be composted like it should have been so i think sometimes i think things don't grow the best haven't grown the best in here because of that and you just want to plant it like these have got soil in them so i'm just planting the soil clump and then i've got my rain barrel of walk water so we're just going to give them a good dosing this rain barrel sits right here and catches more rain and our six albion strawberries are all done. Rain barrel back in place. Now I'm gonna pot up these and I'll sell them for a buck a piece. Then they can go to a good home. Anyway, I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. And I hope that you are gonna be growing some fabulous strawberries, whatever variety they are. Take care, God bless.